Forbes has a fraud problem. Is that true? Do you ever see those Forbes 30 under 30 lists? And they might make you feel a bit down, as there seems to be no. at least 30 people on the planet. I, I apparently, I like, there was like an opportunity for me to be on this whenever I was younger or something. And I just never did it or something. I, I don't know. It might have been something else. It's not really that big of a deal. Who are under the age of 30 and doing a bit better than you are. Right. Well, don't feel too bad because maybe you would have been number 31 on the list. Oh, sure. That's just the cruelty of cutting it off at 30. The people on the list, though, the ones who did make it, they probably just have more promising careers than you do. They'll have garages with Lamborghinis this guy's and not books 30. while you keep all of your books in your house XQC because didn't? that's where you thought they were supposed to yeah. go. One reason not to feel so bad is that as you dig back through some of the old 30 under 30 lists, you'll start to notice a bit of a pattern. A lot of the winners, in fact, often the ones that seemed most impressive at the time, seem to end up going to prison, which probably wasn't. Well, that's not good. That sounds bad. Their goal. Who knows, maybe they went on to become hugely successful prisoners, amassing a I'm huge sure. collection of cigarettes, which are the <laughs> cryptocurrencies of prison. But yeah, sadly, things seem real. to have really fallen apart for many of the Forbes mm -hmm. 30 under 30 over time. So who am I talking about? Well, in recent years, we've seen crypto hobbit Sam Bankman Fried <laughs> make the list. He was listed in 2021, along with a okay. bunch of people with junior roles at banks. Yeah, sure. It makes you wonder who exactly puts these lists together. Well, I think that they just try, like, I don't even think this is that big of a Forbes problem, personally. I think that they're just looking for people that are mysterious and interesting. And you see this guy who's running this big crypto thing and it's like, oh, wow, this is happening. It's so crazy. Like, like, let's go put him on the list. So it looks like we are ahead with the times because you got to remember, like Forbes, they're trying to they're trying to stay relevant as well. Does that make sense? So like because of that, guess what? They're going to try to follow trends and do the same thing that everybody else is. I don't think they're necessarily uh, doing it on purpose. Oh, I guess that explains a lot. When I noticed the pattern of criminals and banking juniors, mm -hmm. I was excited to read the profiles of the 30 under 30 criminals. After all, these profiles had been written right before everything had gone wrong. But that's just not how things are done at Forbes. They have a Winston Smith type working there whose job it is to rewrite the old profiles, keeping them up to date. Sure. The Sam Bankman Freed profile has since been updated to include the fact that he lost all of his own money and gambled away his customers money. Well, he's still got four million dollars. I mean, that's pretty good. I really feel it would have been much better if they had preserved the original piece. There are still some artifacts. Well, if they do that, then they look bad. So that's why they don't do it. To be found, though, the update work has been sloppy. The current profile says that he can't live without Slack. He did, after all, love the auto delete message feature. True. And it says yeah, that his dream that mentor is Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll update that again in the future, listing his favorite prison food and that his dream mentor is D.B. Cooper. I don't know, though. I don't want to be all negative about this. Just because Sam's going to prison doesn't mean that he won't achieve success from there. He can still hold on to many of his old goals. Maybe Well, he can run for you can run for president while you're in prison. So, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. Once he settles in, he'll do everything he can mm -hmm. to get all of the prison cigarettes and then give them away to the prisoners in the greatest need. That's sort of a worthy goal, I guess. I'm sure Sam would I do don't that. know. So what other notable 30 under 30 alumni do we have? Well, on the 2012 list, there's a similar list of junior bankers and Martin Shkreli, the pharma bro. We know about him. This guy, uh, he bought a fucking like an unreleased record of i think it was wu-tang clan it was oh man this guy was great holy shit
He streams? Yeah, he's out of jail now. He already went to jail. He did his time. Now he's out. Prison had to be tough for a guy like Shkreli with such a mm -hmm. punchable face. If you remember, the court struggled after his arrest to find a jury for his case because they couldn't find 12 people in the entire United States that didn't who hate didn't him. hate him. Yeah. <laughs> Some prospective jurors just saw a photo of him and said they didn't like the look of him. <laughs> just, just look, yeah, he's guilty. Just look at him. Selling drugs for insane prices. I mean, yeah, that's obviously bad. But I mean, like, is it really like... I think Martin Shkreli is like, yeah, it's bad, but why is there a Martin Shkreli? Well, maybe because there's a lot of people who are Martin Shkreli, but we don't know their name. The 30 under 30 list, though, That's what I it's think. got quite a pattern. One criminal and then a so bunch 5, of junior 000, yeah. bankers who do the coffee run at Credit Suisse. You need to either be under investigation asshole. for a federal crime or mm -hmm. good at knowing the difference between a flat white and a latte to make this list. As you look at the list of people being praised by Forbes, you wonder if their criteria is to search for people with criminal tendency, and then they keep finding the occasional master criminal each year and a bunch of people who weren't very good at crime and so decided to get day jobs instead. If you've made it onto this list and you are not a junior associate mm -hmm. at an accounting firm, odds are you're going to prison in the next six months or so. In well, shit. Damn, it's a good thing I never ended up on this list. Holy shit. That was lucky. In fact, as soon as the, the people got, yeah, there you go. call you up to let you know that you've made the list, you should probably start trying to secure a fake passport. Mm -hmm. As if you've any sense, you'll be going on the run any day now. So who else made the list? Well, in 2022, months before their downfall, Caroline Ellison and Sam Trabuco of FTX made the cut. They had to share us. In 2021, you've got to keep in mind, like every single dude, people were treating crypto like they treat AI now, except for there were no anime waifus that came out of it. There's nothing. They, but they were just as excited. And I think, honestly, they were probably more excited because you never know what it can do. So it's like, yeah, it could be anything. So, yeah, of course, everybody was, you know, they're trying to, you know, interact with and put these uh, crypto people on the map and talk about them. So it sounds like Forbes isn't a magazine that's being run by people that are of an average age of 71. I think that's just the truth spot though meaning that it was actually the 31 under 30 in 2022 i guess you weren't actually 31 on the list then caroline ellison holds the honor of being the only wood nymph to ever have been included on the 30 under 30 list i'm told it was a huge deal in the wood nymph community at the time oh, but apparently they just don't talk about her anymore they're trying to move on from that yeah i bet the they rest are of the list was just associates at bank of america and aig you Incredible. know office juniors who hired a pr agent uh -huh. now while elizabeth holmes never officially made the 30 under 30 list she did headline the forbes under 30 summit so i think she deserves an honorary mention here too Trevor Milton, the bargain bin Elon Musk, was also on the 2020 Forbes list Christ. called 12 Under 40, which listed the youngest billionaires on the Forbes oh, 400. God. The blurb reads, Trevor Milton, the 38-year-old college dropout behind zero-emission truck maker Nikola Motors, joins the ranks of America's richest millennials after tripling is... his net worth in less than a year. That sounds good. If you don't remember, good for him. Nikola, which was named after Nikola Tesla because the name Tesla had already been taken, famously made a demo video. Yeah, it's not, yeah, now that you put it like that, it does seem like they probably should have gone with a different angle. Yeah, it sounds a bit... Yeah, that does. It, yeah, whenever you put it that way, it does sound stupid, huh? Of its truck rolling down a hill where the camera was tilted to make it look like the prototype was actually driving under its own power. Was it not? I joked at the time 
that they named the company after the wrong scientist. They should have named it Newton. After all, it was the world's first gravity-powered truck. Jesus Christ. So you're telling me that they did a video of a truck rolling down a hill. They faked it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Trevor Milton has since been convicted of fraud oh. and is awaiting sentence. Oh, that's oh, the newest member of the Forbes Hall uh -oh. of Shame is Charlie Javis, who last week was charged by the Justice Department with falsely and dramatically inflating the number of customers of her company, Frank, in order to get J.P. Morgan Chase to overpay for it. Uh -huh. Charlie founded her company, Frank, to help students apply for college financial aid in 2017, Sounds when she good. was just 24 years old. By 2019, she had been named on the Forbes 30 Under 30 list. She described her company as like Amazon for higher education, a phrase that makes absolutely no sense, right? No sense. What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm like thinking about that. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? It's crazy. However, it's kind of like saying my company is the Tesla of pencils. Oh, yeah. are they electric full self writing pencils? No, no, they're um, just good pencils. They're just, uh, they're just pencils. That's about right. Javis described herself as relentlessly upbeat in a podcast interview last year. That's nice. Saying, good for her. There were definitely times where I painted a rosier picture than things truly were. Oh, I guess that's going to be used in the case. Huh. And that, it turns out, was true. In 2021, J.P. Morgan bought her company for $175 million mm -hmm. as part of its Chase retail banking division with the sure. aim of getting access to younger customers. Problems emerged almost immediately after the deal closed when J.P. Morgan noticed that the delivery and open rates for its emails to Frank customers were far, far lower than expected. They launched an investigation and uncovered what U.S. authorities now allege was a month-long scheme to fabricate user data. According to the Smart. lawsuit, Frank only had about three... Rip negative 175 million. What, what's so funny to me about this kind of stuff is that people think they're going to get away with it. Do you really think that they're just going to give you $175 million for nothing? Not a chance. Some do, though. Like, 90% of them don't. 300,000 clients and fabricated data to show a much larger customer base. Javis is alleged to have enlisted a data scientist to make up a few million customers. Yeah, that's Which good. I guess can be described as painting a rosier picture than things truly sure, were. Yeah. The employee who was asked to create the false records allegedly told her, I don't want to do anything illegal, to which Javis allegedly responded, we don't want to end up in orange jumpsuits. Come on now, Charlie, you've got a plan a little. How do you, t like, it's always so crazy to me that these conversations end up getting recorded. Like, don't you think maybe you shouldn't talk about this stuff on the internet? A little bit better. Look at your CV. You're not a junior associate at an accounting firm. The minute Forbes called you, you should have booked a flight to a country that doesn't have an extradition treaty with the United States. Yeah, there you go. It's not hard, Charlie. The signals are very clear. The magazine curse is not a new idea either. A group of finance professors from the University of Richmond in Virginia wrote a paper in 2007 on this very topic, entitled Our Cover Stories Effective Contrarian Indicators. 
Before I dig into that though, let me tell you about today's video sponsor, Incogni. Every year the absolute number and the scale of data breaches worldwide are rising. There were 68% more data breaches in 2021 than the year before. Once your personal data gets out there, the likelihood of it being sold on by data brokers is constantly increasing too. Data brokers aggregate your personal information, including your name, social security number, this is what they do. login yeah, no, details, all this location, true. online activity, and There's much websites more. To check they then you, sell this data to whoever will pay, which may be businesses wishing to market to you. But once your data is out there, it can fall into the hands of criminals too. Oh, absolutely. The good news is that you have the right to protect your privacy by requesting data brokers to delete the information they store on you. The bad news is that it would take you years to do it manually. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side. Sign up for Incogni by using the link in the description below. The first 100 people to use the discount code BOIL will get 60% off Incogni. There's an old- that's, that's interesting. I didn't even know you could do that. Holy shit. Yeah, there's other things that are similar to that for, uh, what do you call it, for other types of uh, like things to like get yourself removed off of websites, etc. Old story, the Joe Kennedy I mean, no, they can uh, actually legendary- do that. Well, what they do is they just what they do is they'll probably send in a request to the different companies that just has a list of emails and names that are just being requested to be removed. And then the company has to legally comply with it. But the odds are that the government, they probably finesse the government into being able to do it and then only undo it if they were asked. Yeah, send a request. They don't do it. Problem solved. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so that that's that's how how it happens. Stock manipulator dumped all of his shares right before the 1929 stock market crash, saying, you know, it's time to get out when the shoeshine boys start giving you stock tips. Shoeshine boys were the finance YouTubers of the roaring 20s. The 2007 academic paper suggests that the modern day contrarian equivalent is magazine oh covers. The professors oh looked at 549 cover stories from three business magazines, Business Week, Forbes and Fortune, over Sarge, a 20 yeah. year period. They then went on to analyze good, how yeah. the shares of the featured companies had fared in the 500 days before and the 500 days after the publication date. I think it makes sense, though, that a lot of the people that get the most visibility are the most volatile. It really does, because those are the people that are on the surface level, the most astonishing and the most incredible, like the, you know, the Elizabeth Holmes and the Theranos thing. And then also Sam Bankman Freed with S with a fucking what's it called? FTX. So like whenever you, you see them and it's like, oh, wow, like, well, these people are doing such a crazy, incredible thing. This is amazing. Of course, they're going to paint the best picture because their picture isn't even fucking real. So, of course, they're going to get more attention that way. It kind of makes sense whenever you think about the way people are attracted to, uh, you know, extremes. This is because companies made the cover of these publications for both good and bad reasons. Mm -hmm. You probably won't be that surprised to hear that the companies that received the most positive coverage in the run up to the publication date were top performers having on average outperformed the stock market by 43% All right. before making the cover. The companies that received negative magazine coverage were ones that had on average underperformed the stock market by 35% before making the cover. Right, it was the academics coverage. discovered a reversal of fortune tended to occur after the articles were published. The high flyers period of outperformance came to an end and the beaten down stocks went on to beat the market after the publication date. As the authors put it, positive stories generally indicate the end of superior performance and negative news generally indicates the end of poor performance. That's a really interesting insight. I never thought of it like that.
Yeah, I, I like that. That's that's smart. The research shows that investing based on media enthusiasm mm -hmm. can be destructive to your wealth. The magazine cover indicator isn't new. It was first published more than 35 years ago by Paul McRae Montgomery, an American fund manager. His analysis of every Time magazine cover since 1923 led him to state that whenever a periodical has a cover story, it's been significant 85% of the time. When I worked for Victor Niederhofer, I helped with some of the research that went into his book, Practical Speculations. I'll put a link to that book in the video description. One of the studies that went into the book was an analysis on Time Magazine's Person of the Year award. Victor found the award to be a hubristic curse, pointing out that the award had gone to companies or CEOs on six occasions and the winning company stock went on to deliver an average decline of 10% over the next two years versus an average. See, like, that's crazy to me. I, I never really knew that people would think like that because, like, I, I thought that whenever, like, they came up with that, it's like, yeah, well, it's probably because the company that got negative coverage, like, people didn't know about it before then. That's why it wasn't doing well. So, like, maybe now that because people are hearing about it, more people are investing into it. But that doesn't really explain why a, a, a company that's doing well would start doing worse. I, the only way I could explain that would be, like, maybe because they would have more eyes on them after that. But fuck. I, I don't know. Average gain of 20% for the S&P 500 for the same two-year period. He similarly found that companies who had the naming rights to the world's <laughs> tallest building tended to underperform the stock market in both one, three, and five-year periods the after fuck? the building was completed. And in a study that might have warned you about FTX, Victor found that companies... I mean, this kind of happened with Kai and Ludwig, too, on Twitch, right? It's like after they did the subathon, viewership went down a lot because, like, you... You, you reach that high point, and it happened with Ninja, too. You reach, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you reach that high point, and, and then people are like, okay, well, you know, that already happened. Now they move on. It's weird, but yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that really there's a, a, a an example, multiple examples on Twitch. Paid for the naming rights of sports stadiums. Also yeah, it can only go downhill from here. Yeah, that's the way people Business think. Business Week was a magazine that was first published in September 1929, just weeks before the <coughs> stock market crash. It was Yeah, I think that like I mean really hype is like so big on Twitch. Like I don't know about on YouTube, etc., who knows, but like on Twitch hype is like such a big thing and like with a lot of these companies, <laughs> I mean, you saw like with how many of these massive companies like FTX, they're not delivering a product. They're not providing a service. They're just existing. And because people think that what they're doing is really hyped up, everybody's investing on them. So, yeah, I think that stocks are kind of the same. Bought out by Bloomberg in 2009. <coughs> Business Week had such a terrible history of wrong calls that sell when Business Week's cover says buy became a Wall Street maxim. They famously proclaimed the death of equities in 1979 and announced the dawning of the Internet age in December 1999. They put Jeffrey Skilling, the CEO of Enron, on the cover in February 2001, praising Enron's strict risk management controls. Months later... It's like of all the things, you know? It's one thing to say good things about Enron... It's another thing to put them on the cover, and it's another entire world to put them on the cover and praise them for risk management. Holy shit. Their skilling resigned for personal reasons, and Enron imploded in the biggest bankruptcy in corporate history at the time. I think skilling it's also like a lot of the people that are, you know, writing for these magazines, uh, you know, I bet they probably don't get paid as much as the people that are actually buying and selling stocks. So logically, it would make sense that 
a lot of the reasons why they're writing for the magazines and not buying or selling stocks is because they're not good enough to compete with the people that are actually buying and selling stocks. So logically, it would make sense that these magazines that are giving advice are often wrong. He was eventually sentenced to 24 years in prison. As The Economist Paul Krugman famously put it, whom the gods would destroy, they first put on the cover of Business Week. Now, the rule doesn't just apply in the world of business. The Sports Illustrated cover jinx is an urban legend that states that individuals or teams who appear on the cover of the Sports Illustrated yeah. magazine will subsequently be jinxed. An explanation for the Sports Illustrated jinx is that athletes are generally featured on the cover after an exceptionally good performance, right. which might be an outlier compared with their usual level of playing. Sure. After this makes, exceptional yeah, sense, performance, logic. there is essentially nowhere to go but down. And that fucks with the their statistician head. Francis Galton, while trying to explain data that showed the offspring of tall parents were on the average not as tall as their parents, and the offspring of short parents were on the average not as short as their parents, described this effect as regression to mediocrity, which was later renamed regression toward the mean. Chris Backey... Uh, See, that's just another example how back in the day, people were such fucking assholes, they would just talk like that. But nowadays, nobody wants to hear things, and so everything has a euphemism. Yeah, it sounds better. ...tweeted last week that the Forbes 30 Under 30 have collectively raised $5.3 billion in funding, and the That's Forbes 30 Under 30 have also been arrested for frauds and scams worth over $18.5 billion, an incredible track record. Oh. The first number comes from Forbes, and the second is Backy's own calculation. But you get the idea. Oh. As a group, they have frauded three and a half times the amount of money that they've raised in funding, which is an impressive level of fraud. You have to give it to them. They're dedicated to their craft. Absolutely. The line between innovator and fraudster seems to have become alarmingly thin. Well, it becomes even more thin as technology gets so advanced because now there's so many laws like you have you have things like wire fraud and there's like catch all laws that they have nowadays that are used for uh, you know crypto shit etc but most of the time there aren't laws for tons of crypto things there it's not spelled out in the same way it is for a traditional bank there's not traditional laws for NFTs in the same way that there is for a car, for example. There's not Grand Theft JPEG, but there's Grand Theft Auto. So guess what? You're going to have a lot of scammers that get into new markets because new markets are where you can make the most fucking money because the rules aren't established yet. Look, if you work at a bank and the junior associate who does your coffee run has made it onto this list, there's a really good chance that they've taken your coffee mm -hmm. money and that they're not coming back with the coffee. I'm sorry, <laughs> but this list is a huge red flag that you should have spotted. If your name has appeared on the Forbes 30 under 30 and you're running some sort of criminal conspiracy, it might be time to start planning your escape. The clock is ticking. On the other hand, if you made it onto the list and you're a junior at an accounting firm, who hired a publicist to get this done. Uh -huh. Congratulations, but you really shouldn't be watching this video. I think you know better than anyone that the coffee is not going to make itself. If you enjoyed this video, you should watch my video on why people trust fraudsters next. Don't forget to check out our video sponsor this guy is great. using the link in I... the description below. Have a great day and see you in the next video. Bye. Wow, what a tremendous fucking asshole. I love him. I absolutely love him. He is amazing. This is so good. Yeah, look at actual Elden Lord. Yeah, it's god damn, that was amazing. Wow, definitely subscribing. Yeah, there's the video right there. God damn. There's great videos, even though he never blinks. Apparently not. You guys probably good at poker? Maybe. 
He's the real deal, formerly a hedge fund manager. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I never got into finance type stuff, right? It was just not never really my thing. But again, it's not really a surprise that these kinds of people get the most attention because they're seemingly doing the most incredible things. You'd think that they're not even real. And guess what? It turns out they're not. So what a surprise.